Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. What kind of food should we eat to have the best energy? Can someone become a saint if he or she was a sinner? Food and, and sainthood. So you're, you're hungry and ambitious. That's good. Yeah, that's good. It's <laughs> a whole thing. <laughs> Email us please at helpme at nurmuhammad.com. All separate issues. Everything we eat, we drink is, is an energy. That's why when we say when, when the, the shaykhs are trained at the level of energy and, and others may make fun of what they're talking about energy. Because they, they witness what's happening, they witness the fires, they witness the negativity, they understand what's happening in the interaction. When we're eating food, there's an energy in the food and the person who touched it, the level in which they harmed the creature or the creature was at peace, did the adrenaline of the animal enter into the meat creates like an energy. The person who touches it with the junub and he's not clean touches the energy. All of this is if you had a visual would be like sparking energies and if there's blood in it the shaitan can stay within that energy. And how you understand and see it is when you see something go bad. When something goes bad there's a force of creatures that are coming and they're trying to pull its energy, immediately become rotten and fuzzy and fungus. You see the process, put some bread out, watch and if you're sensitive with energy you can put your hand around you feel very negative energy because creatures are coming. They're coming there and their dimension is not to physical eat. They pull the energy from the food. As a result of pulling the energy of the food and pulling their way of achieving their sustenance Allah gave to them in the trash or in good or in bad or in the bone and the marrow. This is how Allah gave for these creatures to feed. As a result they make it to decay. So they put all this negative energy then you put this energy and go, Aum. So then all this negativity because they saw it in their training, they're not talking is just uh, from a book. They see the energy, it goes into the mouth. Sixteen teeth to process good and bad energy. This energy goes from the mouth, so who's the next person who kills himself the most? Dentist. Why? Because they don't understand that they're touching the energy of people's mouth from everything they ate and drank because we're energy beings. Our, we're sustaining our physicality and we're energy beings absorbing all of these things. They found then, oh the plaque on the teeth can cause heart decay, heart uh, damage. Because the energy, the energy goes from here, goes into the stomach, goes into the blood, goes into the lungs. And of course it's going to destroy the heart, destroy the entire system. So energy is, is the most important understanding on why Allah wanted for us halal. The creature shouldn't suffer, shouldn't know, shouldn't excrete its suffering into the meat. The blood has to be drawn out of the meat because that's where shaitan is moving through the blood. If you don't have access to that. You can put salt on your meat, absorb it in salt, wait a little bit and then rinse the meat off so that the salt took away every type of negativity. And then on everything you eat and drink you make the Naqshbandi du'a, it's on the app. Illa Sharaf al-Nabi kiram ghulam and then and there's other Naqshbandi du'as for food and ta'am that you have to pray upon the food that Allah make it to be beatific and angelic and put a barakah and blessing in it so that when we put it into our mouth and want to eat and drink from that ta'am it be something that not make us sick but to bless us. Because every bite with a du'a and with piety 300 malaika are coming instead of all the shaitans and everything that shaitan is trying to put onto the food. So those whom are eating from that understanding why Allah sent that understanding was so that they could gain access to the reality of their heart and to their breath, to their whole reality, to achieve their reality. 
so that they understood what they breathe is energy. Why then be around somebody who's smoking? If he's trying to burn his lungs and burn and contaminate your lungs, you need those lungs to achieve nafasul rahmah. So only energy can teach that. Otherwise you want to talk about halal and haram and say, oh well you know it wasn't specifically in a hadith but it's… Uh, I don't know maybe makru. What are you talking about? If anybody who understands the, the energy realities will teach you from Prophet about the energy. You can't harm yourself, you can't kill yourself, you can't take a path of, of an eventual suicide so of course it's haram. And you can't kill other people, by you smoking on this table that guy's dying. Next question is, oh can you smoking aloud? <laughs> uh, Sayyidi, why do we feel better when we cut our hair? Oh I don't know that we feel better when we cut our hair but… InshaAllah <laughs> <laughs> if, if you feeling better because you cut your hair because the negativity that's in the hair. And that's not for ladies, that's, that's for men. The reality of, of the head and the reality of the hair it was for the hawa and the, the looks that in the animal kingdom the male beautifies himself to attract the female. In Allah's kingdom they don't beautify themselves to attract people. They try to fulfill what Allah wants from them. The shaving of the hair is a path of humility in which to humble themselves and bring their character and bad character down. And as a result they understood also an immense amount of negative energy will be associated with the hair. Why? Because of the same thing. Why is it causing that? Is that people are looking at it, people are envying it, you become proud of it. All this becomes a cycle of negativity that can be overwhelming. So when they grow their hair they feel a lot of energy, negative energy and then as soon as they shave it they feel better and relieved. One, because that how was going, you, you know that you don't look attractive with a bold head. And two, you feel the, the sense of humility that Allah to, to be pleased with the servant at that time. And when you shave the head you're more likely to keep the sunnah of keeping your head covered with your hat. So it has many different realities and these are all protections. The holy sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad is a protection for us against our hawa, against our nafs and against du'a, our dunya and that shaitan is trying to use all those to pull the servant towards him, inshaAllah. As Alaikum Sayyidi, please As forgive my ignorance and weak iman. Should my family stay put or leave the city, the rioting, crazy laws, earthquakes now? I'm weak Sayyidi, please help. InshaAllah. You know everyone to where they live you have to email help me at nurmuhammad.com and based on where you live and what's happening in those environments inshaAllah more inspiration to come. General rule is where are we going to run to? I wouldn't want to be in the middle of you know downtown New York but if you're in a decent area, not too busy, not too crowded, where else can we run to? The country is not necessarily safe. There are also people who thought of that first and they're already hiding there. So you go into some of these wilderness areas and you think it's going to be good and isolated. No, they're actually people who didn't want to be seen by anyone and they ran away from the law and they're hiding in all those areas. So everything right now is very dangerous every, everywhere. It's not so much a matter of location but more important is that the connection. Is my connection good? Is my amal good? Is my salawat strong? Is my love for Sayyidina Muhammad is strong? That sends a light. That light within the heart begin to become stronger and stronger. That light is a light of guidance. That will give us an understanding 
of our coordinates and, and where we are and how dangerous it is where we are, everything. We wake from a heedlessness to a guided state. That's what's most important versus trying to think, I got to run to a specific location. First let me to build myself, if I'm in a very dangerous location no problem go out a little bit further. Don't go out into completely isolated wildernesses because there are people out there that already thought of that and maybe more nefarious. So it's a moderate understanding inshaAllah. I'll give you example that there's somebody who has a place that's pretty isolated. And he went to a store and the store had weapons and he was just talking to the people and the person in the store said, you know what, when all of these bad things happen, me and my bro we're gonna grab some stuff and head out to the, that location and just sort of pillage. And he's like, huh? He just told them that unsolicited uh, interesting uh, response that some people have a very bad intention of bad times and what they think they're going to do and look for isolated places and so uh, there's no power and there's no help without Allah And that's why all this teaching is focusing first on build yourself, make your connection, make Allah to be happy with us, Prophet to be happy with us, things will become more clear exactly where I, I belong and, and exactly what's going to be protecting me inshaAllah. How can we join the tariqah? Alhamdulillah that yeah. you're watching you're in <laughs> and then the, the bayah online we said before that uh, you can recite the bayah from the app it has the online bayat and every Thursday we try to recite the bayah inshaAllah we'll do that tonight and, and recite the bayah online. But as soon as you're watching and partaking and, and being involved in the tariqah, emailing, supporting you have to know that you're already in it and that this is a, a reality of familiarity. There's no way that you could be listening, participating and that we are not together in the world of light. Because we said the guidance comes from Allah For you to be magnetically drawn to something means malakut is already there. In the world of light it's already connected. As a result of that connection there's an attraction in the physical world. If we not connected in malakut you're actually repelled in the physical world. So a simple understanding of magnets. So sometimes you come across things you're completely repelled to it. Why? Because this is not for your reality. It's not in the, in the energy, the fires and the juzba that coming to you what we call magnetism and magnetic draw. So we're all drawn immensely to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad If Allah allowed we would have millions sitting at the Rosa Sharif and just making salawats all day long because this is the magnet of our reality is all drawn to Medina to Munawwara. So that's our magnetic pull, that's what's important and to bring that to nourish that is through the salawats, the love, the good character, things that make Allah happy and Sayyidina Muhammad happy. That are we good ambassadors of that reality, are we trying our best to be helpful, to, part to participate and have good deeds inshaAllah. Uh, As Alaikum Sayyidi, I'm having problems in connecting my heart. I'm doing all the practices but still something is off, kindly guide me in this regard. Yeah, help me at nurmuhammad.com so that you can give more detail, you don't want… this is again, this is a, an open platform. So at that email then they can go over more specifically, what exactly are you doing? And are you doing the awrads, you're doing the, the zikrs, you're doing the salawat and, and you're, you're trying to focus and meditate and uh, it should be very strong, very powerful. Now if you're leaving something out and doing it sporadically and, and, and different things can be happening in which you don't feel the heart is, is warming. And that's what I think we talked the other night about that is that you make your heart to feel that warmth. Look at the difficulty of mankind, look at the harm in which they're causing upon each other, look how they harm animals, how they harm people, make yourself to cry. Make yourself to have empathy. Many people have 
grown very cold, they, they're non-responsive to everything. And why Prophet wanted us to have families? Why? He says that 50% of your deen, you know, to be married to have a family. Why? Because you feel an empathy. You feel a sense that, you know, I'm not take care of myself is one thing, now I have to take care of other people. I'm responsible for these people. Then you watch all of these news and all these things that are happening in the world and think, oh my god, what would I do if they came after me and they came and bulldozed into my home and took my family and destroyed them like they're doing all over the world? And then you cry, cry for these people that are suffering. Ya Rabbi Ham, you're not making me suffer yet. But a crying for all these people who are in immense difficulty means you, you have to warm the heart, we have to work on the heart, we're focused, waqaf al qalb, we have to keep our focus upon the heart that it's a very sensitive uh, being. If all day long I'm lying at work and you know just gossiping, laughing, doing all sorts of bad character, all of these come into account, you're hardening your heart. So Prophet describes wasallam that, if you knew what I knew you would cry more than you laugh. So are we laughing more or are we crying more? So when we see all these sad things and we cry and that's good for the heart, that's good for the empathy of, of the being to feel a sensitivity. But in a world that makes everything cold and, and ridiculed and, and laugh and joke and have you know crazy character and then come say, oh I'm just going to sit down and open my heart, it doesn't work like that. So we have to go over it a little bit more in detail, inshaAllah. Uh, As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi, can you tell me a little bit, a little information behind the symbol or logo that you use for SMC? No. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. It's a beautiful symbol, nice calligraphy. They say it's, the, it's a bird of power. Allah Zawajal is from Ati Allah, Ati Rasul, Ulul Amri Minkum. So, Alhamdulillah has immense uh, blessings in it and uh, beautiful to look at, InshaAllah. Uh, As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh, can you tell us about the Zulfiqar? Yeah that in, in Muharram inshaAllah we'll be opening up in Muharram and the secret of uh, Zulfiqar and the realities of uh, Lam Alif. The La of Lam Alif is the secret of the Zulfiqar. So the tariqah bi siddhat alam jalala that the secret of the path is based on the understanding of lam alif. That Allah is a hidden treasure, the alif, wanting to be known created the lam. And their reality of how it flips. So the lam comes and connects from behind the alif and then. Allah moves the lamb forward. So this whole reality and haqqaiq of, of being a hidden treasure wanting to be known, then Imam Ali Salam holds that sword as the master of the ulul bab and the gate of all knowledges which is the city of Sayyidina Muhammad And that you have to come to the gate and remove the mental faculty and thinking through the head and that this reality is only open to the heart inshaAllah. And we have the articles on, on Lam Alif, the, heart, the articles on, on uh, Muharram inshaAllah, those all cover those inshaAllah. As Salaam Sayyidi, should a person avoid meditation if they are already seeking a similar support from mental health services? Seeking uh, mental health services? What's that mean? Doctor's advice. No, the doctor's advice definitely we don't… that at all times you follow the doctor's advice and that anybody it's three prong, body, mind and soul. So when we deal with the soul and soul practices the assumption is that the body's well and the mind has been taken care of. At any time if your body's not doing well you go to a physician because you have to take your medicines. 
And anytime your mind is not well definitely you have to take your medicines and go to a physician and practitioner for that specialty. Then you come for spiritual training and spiritual understanding and that's very limited and you never stop those. If they feel that you're stopping it they stop advising you and they, it's not going to happen because the danger is that somebody begin to imagine all mind thinking they're cured, they don't need to take their physical medicine and they die of heart disease or they don't take their mental medicine and jump out a window and think, I'm cured. No, because Allah give a difficulty to servants. And it's not a matter of being cured but it's a matter of understanding and living with that difficulty is what's important to Allah That's what we call the struggle. It's not the victory that I'm going to join and become cured, that would be like the pursuit of victory. But Allah's victory actually is to live with a difficulty and endure through difficulties and be patient for its resolution and for what Allah wants to grant inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Sayyidi, my understanding is that skin rashes, sweat during awrad and heat sensation can be related to our energy cleansing. My question is how can we stop it if it gets too overwhelming? Uh, stop your, your energy cleansing. <laughs> yeah, depends on what you're doing, how you're doing. Again you have to email helpme at nurmuhammad.com that uh, what type of sensitivity do you have, what are you eating at that time, what are you drinking, are you doing it on a full stomach, empty stomach, what are your practices that you're exactly doing that you feel that it's resulting in rashes and, and difficulties. Most likely it's not and if you're doing it correctly, meditating, looking at the fires of the shaykhs, asking for their, their nazar to be upon you and uh, feeling an energy, maybe a vibration or, or uh, interruption or, or agitation maybe and shouldn't be resulting in, in blisters and skin outbreaks and that would be a little bit extreme. But you have to email us more information to understand and anytime you feel the energy around you is, is not good then you take water in a sprayer and put tea tree oil, a few drops of tea tree oil. And you spray that around your environment, any type of negativity doesn't like tea tree oil. And that's why you see that on your feet when they're around your feet or, or you feel like there's problems on the feet or on the nails of the feet, these energies are staying and collecting there. So you get the tea tree oil with the water and spray and spray around the house areas where you don't feel the energy is clean and, and comfortable and they don't like tea tree oil, the bad energy, inshaAllah. Good. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.